Right, I'm going to start my latest video here because this is the town where I live. This is St. Helens Town Centre. And like many town centres in the, uh, the north of England, they're pretty much null and void now. You know, no one really comes shopping in town centres anymore, hence boarded up shops and stuff. But the reason I'm here is because my watch has died and I'm going on a little expedition. So I've just put my watch in to get a new battery, which I'm going to be picking up in a minute. And instead of going to Scotland like I normally do, I'm going to Wales, boy -o. I'm off doing a couple of little things I've wanted to do for a long time. And the first thing is, I'm going to head down to Cadder Idris and I'm on a wild camp Cadder Idris tonight. So I'll just look at where I am now and look where I'll end up in about a two and a half hour drive. That's a good thing about the northwest of England. Although it's a bit of a dive, you can escape to a lot of different places. You know, North Wales, Peak District, Lake District. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all within easy reach. You know, Yorkshire's not even that far. So, hi. So come with me as we go up Cadillidris tonight. And then I want to head down towards the Brecon Beacons. I want to climb the Penny Fan on possibly Wednesday. I've got a lot of bad memories of the Brecon Beacons from the old military days, because it's where we used to get beasted most of the time. As you can tell, it's quite windy out here, and we're at blooming floor level here. Wait till I get up the mountains. So yeah, I'm gonna make some good memories in the Brecon Beacons, see where we end up. But, adios from St. Helens. Welcome to the valleys. Right, I've arrived in Wales and I'm by Cadder Idris where you start the walk. Problem is, it's £6 to leave my car on the car park and you can only park till midnight. No overnight parking. Just happens at the side of it is a campsite, um, which is £13 a night. So, it's really windy today, really windy. It's already windy down here and I can hear it up there. So, I'm going to get on a, this campsite. There's literally... There's a bit of a tarp thing over there, a wigwam. There's no one else, there's only me here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go and walk Cadder Idris now and then I'll come back after. Put my tent up, get some food, chill out. So yeah, that's the plan. And then tomorrow head down towards the Brecon Beacons via the few places. So catch you later. Well this is the climb up to Cather Idris from the car park. Uh, it is quite uh, quite steep, it's like steps coming all the way up, but it doesn't go on too long. Um, and we're coming to the end of this kind of tree area, and then we'll be swinging round to the left, and then it'll all open up with the mountain and the lake where I was going to camp at side of. Um, be interesting seeing what the conditions are like when I get up there. But yeah, it's that's hard work, but it's short and sharp. Right, I've got to the spot where I was going to wild camp tonight. Uh, and it's gorgeous, but it is really windy. Uh, so I'm going to stand up now. Excuse the wind noise, I've not got one of them muff things. It's just on my mobile phone, but it's absolutely stunning. This is the little spot I was going to pitch at, but the wind is coming straight from that direction. So I'm going to go on there. I'm going to go and climb up there now. Do the horseshoe all the way around, and then come back down this side and back to that campsite. But yeah, this is this would have been far too windy up here. Around the corner to get out of the wind and wow it's not half opening up look at that absolutely stunning 
gorgeous day. I know it's windy and it's cold and it's June, but you know it's clear. You can see from absolute miles. Still going up there anyway. Lots of climbing left. This is another one of them moments where I just want to document one of life's special memories. Still climbing Cadredris here, but it's absolutely gorgeous. And that's the sea over there going down. That's all Cardigan Bay, I think, over there. But I'm gonna head I'm gonna get back in the wind in a minute, so why I'm not in the wind. I'm uh, chilling out for ten minutes. And just taking all this in. Magic. Absolutely magical. Just check out this for the drop. You would not want to walk off that in the dark. Just have a look at this. shocking you are not coming back if you fall off this there's the summit too far to go now shocking. so this is the famous um, shelter at the top of Cadredris there's the summit there there's a bloke just going there doesn't look that I'm saying that I was going to say it doesn't look that appealing but so it doesn't look too bad. <laughs> you, you know, you could spend the night in here. Won't be the most comfiest, but you know, it's, it's out the wind for a start. That's brilliant. Yeah, I always wondered what it would be like. It's actually better than I thought it would be. Well, this is where I've ended up for my first night. And if Carlsberg did campsites, this is exactly the type I'd come on. Because there's no one on it. I oh, hate campsites, I avoid them like the plague. But it was too windy to camp up there. This is just at the bottom of the trail. And um, yeah, so me and Bob, this is Bob's first expedition. This is Bob, the little Kia. So, uh, hopefully, we're going to have many happy memories together. And I won't write it off in the snow like I did with uh, Stephen Rigby, my last one. Good morning from the Van Gogh Banshee. Very quiet night last night. Very peaceful. So, the start of a new day. A bit cloudy out there, but it's dry. I think it's going to stay dry as well. So, the adventure will continue. Right, I'm currently in a telephone box. A red telephone box. And uh, the reason I'm here is because this is the famous telephone box, which is at the start of the fan dance, which is a part of SAS selection. And uh, I'm today, on day two, going climbing, Penny Fan. So I'm going to come out of here and then this track at the side will take me right up the Penny Fan. And I started filming there because it's already windy and I've not even started climbing yet. But yeah, this is where the fan dance starts and ends. And it's all uphill for me. Well, it is straight up from the start, straight up, and it just keeps going and going. I'm just reading uh, Rusty Furman's book about uh, when he joined the SAS. And he spent three weeks before selection started 
actually churning for it around this area and they burst themselves in this forest there for three weeks before selection even started used it as a base so they could go and explore the hills and get to know the land and beast themselves and get fit ready for the selection process so tonight in honour of him I'm also going to make a camp in these woods tonight and that's where I'll be sleeping but oh, I've got to climb this bloody mountain yeah adios well the fan dance after the initial climb uh, it's not as bad and then it actually starts dropping right down here and it drops down into the valley there and then you climb it all the way up there that's not actually penny fan penny fans behind that um, so yeah I mean you're doing it with 80 pound on your back and a rifle you know can't be much fun can it Right, I'm near the top of that first flat one now. Um, yeah, it's been a steady climb all the way up, but I've just had my first glimpse of what I think is Penny Fan here, the summit. So I've still got to go up and round you, but look at this, it's well up there. And that's a big drop as well down there, so I don't want to get too close. But stunning to be up here on such a day like this, where I can just see for miles. I am blessed today. I am indeed blessed. Well, this is the top of that flat one, and we're nearly at the top of Penny Fan. There it is. Just got to drop down a little bit, and then it's up to the top, and it's all open up. Taliban Reservoir down there. You can just see for absolute miles around here. Right, I'm going to get up to the top of that thing. This is why I try and avoid busy mountains, really. There's flopping loads of people up here. But I needed to tick it off. So uh, I have to put up with the people for the time being. Beautiful day today. I'm not going to bother queuing for the summit. There's loads of people, part of a group getting photographs and stuff but I'll just pan round show you I tell you what from this from this side of Penny Fan that is just straight off the edge that is just straight down there and I think when they're doing selection they come up to the summit and I think they carry on down here then down to a disused railway line turn round come all the way back back over the top and all the way back down where we've just come it's mad, isn't it? I'd be handing me blooming number in before he even got off the back of the Bedford truck. Right, I'm set up for the night. It's quarter past six. Done penny fan today. And um, I said I was going to camp in the woods at the bottom of penny fan. And there we are. It's not a bad little spot. I had a good mooch about, but there's a lot of very steep areas and it was a bit, you know, wasn't great for camping, but this spot was all right. And it's actually, you can actually see the path. I can hear voices over there, um, but the path basically goes up that way, up to that one. And then behind that is Penny Fan. So yeah, I should be all right here for tonight. Uh, some people have camped here before. But it's the obvious best place I've found anyway, so I'll be having it for tonight. And then I'll move on tomorrow.